Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 3, Lesson 2, Importing Assets into Unreal Engine. In this lesson, we're going to explain common asset types used in game development. We'll explain and then demonstrate the process for importing assets into Unreal Engine, and then we'll demonstrate setting up imported assets for use when they're not game ready. Up until this point in the course, we've been using mainly primitive assets to build out our games. And while this is great for a prototype, most people eventually want something that's a little bit more visually appealing. For this, we're going to need to bring in assets from other places to use in our projects. And the assets that we're going to use usually fall into one of three categories. 3D assets, 2D assets, and sound. Now, there are some other exceptions to this, but most of them are going to fall into one of those three categories. When we talk about 3D assets, we're usually talking about something with an FBX file type. FBX is definitely the most common format for game development, but OBJ is an exception. In some cases, I have had issues with OBJ files though, so I usually recommend looking for an FBX file. When it comes to 2D assets, the most commonly used file type is a PNG. You can also use a TGA file type because these are also uncompressed and both of those file types usually contain an alpha channel, which is available to make things invisible that you don't want to be shown. JPEGs can also be used, but keep in mind, sometimes these have heavy compression and you may see that your assets don't look as good in Unreal Engine. When it comes to sound files, Dot .wav files are usually the best sound quality because there's no compression. However, Unreal Engine can accept most sound file types. And of course, there's everything else, which could include fonts, videos, and any other type of asset that you want to include in your project. Unless you also do 3D modeling, you may be wondering, where can I find some assets for my game? Before you start spending a bunch of money, I recommend you check a few of these places because they do have some free assets that are great for prototyping and even some cheap ones that you can use in a completed game. The Unreal Marketplace is a great place to start looking for assets. The assets sold in the Unreal Marketplace are vetted by Epic, which means for the most part, you can be sure that what you're getting is going to work in Unreal Engine. In addition, there's a lot of free assets that are provided by content creators as well as Epic Games that you can use in your product absolutely free. There are also several vendors that sell 3D assets. A few notable ones are cgtrader.com, turbosquid.com, sketchfab.com, and blendermarket.com. Now do be aware when you're buying an asset that it has the correct file type that you need. Sometimes these marketplaces will sell content that doesn't have an FBX file type which means you may need to use another software to create that FBX file type. If you don't have experience in these softwares, I recommend that you just look for assets that have the FBX file type and only get those. This is especially true for Blender Market, as most of the assets sold there only come with the .blend file and you would need to know how to use Blender in order to make that into an FBX file. Quixel is another marketplace and all of the content on Quixel is free to use in any game developed in Unreal Engine. Now these assets sometimes aren't great when using them for games. However, I have found a few in here that I've been able to use in projects in the past. Keep in mind though that these are only free to use as long as you're in Unreal Engine. If you take them out of Unreal Engine, you might want to read the terms of service to make sure you have the proper licensing. Mixamo is an excellent website that contains a lot of 3D character models, as well as animations that can be used for free in your projects. There is a little bit of setup to get these assets to work in an Unreal Engine project, but we'll go over that in this course. And although this is not technically a 3D asset, cc0textures.com has a lot of free to use textures that can be used to build out your scenes, especially when it comes to things like creating ground textures or textures on walls and buildings. When you purchase content on the Epic Marketplace, you'll see it in your Epic Games Launcher. Here in the Epic Launcher, you'll see that I have my vault and this shows all of the assets that I've purchased. You'll usually be given one of two options, add to project, in which case you'll need to select which project to add these assets to, or create project, 
which means you need to create a new project from scratch in order to use this asset pack. You may notice that from time to time, some of them will say update, which means the content creator for this has created a new version of this and you're able to update to the latest version. If you're buying content from another vendor, you'll need to import it into your project. Once you import an asset into your project, it no longer will exist as the original file type, for instance, FBX, Unreal Engine will make this into a .u asset file. And if you have content in one project, you can migrate it into another project. This takes all the .u asset files and moves them to the new project. This is especially useful if you get something from the Epic Marketplace that is no longer supported for the newer versions of Unreal Engine. You can create a project in the supported version of Unreal Engine and then migrate those assets into the new version of Unreal Engine. Let's demonstrate importing some assets into Unreal Engine. In our Haunted House project, we're going to need a house for the player to explore. I'm here on CG Trader, and there's a vendor called Interables that has a lot of great assets that you can use for free in your games. I highly recommend checking out this vendor if you don't already have a house asset that you wanted to use. And if we click on one of these, you can see that there's a free download and we'll go ahead and download one of these houses. Now, if you don't like this style for your game, feel free to find another vendor. The process will be the same as long as you have that FBX file type. And this will come through as a zip file. And in there, we'll see the mesh file and the textures file. Let's extract both of these into another location. Now, if we go into the mesh file, we'll see that we do have those FBX files as well as some other file types. And the texture files are all PNG. Let's import these into our game. I'm back here in my project and I want to create a new folder to keep these things tidy. So I'm going to right click and select new folder and call this models. Now in here, we can right click in the content browser and select import to game slash models, or there's an add button over here we can click that does the same thing. We'll navigate to our content, and what we want is these ones that say LOD0. Let's grab both of those, and we'll select open. We're then presented with this window. This gives us some options for how we want to import our asset. For now, let's just leave everything the way it is, and we'll select import all. And depending on the size of the file, this may take some time. And you may notice that you get some warnings after importing. These usually let you know if there are issues with the model. For what we're doing, we don't really need to be concerned with these though. In here, we have all the parts of the model. And you'll notice that it created some new materials for us when it imported them. We have concrete, concrete 2, redwood, redwood 2, roof, and roof 2. We probably don't need duplicates, so let's delete all the ones that say two. I'm going to create another folder called textures, and then we'll import the texture files from those models. And here are the texture files for the concrete. We'll import those. And just to keep it tidy, I'm going to create some subfolders as well. Let's take these three materials and move them back into the main content folder. And now I have a models folder, which has all the 3D assets in it. I have a textures folder, which has all of my 2D texture files in it. And then I also created a materials folder for the three materials that were created when we did the import. As your games start to get larger and larger, you'll notice that it's really important to keep things organized. This is especially helpful if you're collaborating with other people so that everybody knows the common place where things are stored in the project. Now that we have our materials and our textures, we can set up these materials to use the textures. Here I'm in my concrete texture, and I'm gonna right click and type texture, and I wanna select texture sample. I'm going to connect this to my base color, and then I'm going to find the concrete base color. Let's select this texture sample, and we'll hit Control D to make a duplicate. We can find the roughness and connect that to roughness. 
and then do the same for normals. Now, you may want to get more advanced with setting up your textures, but this at least will give us a basis and a good visual representation for our house. Let's do the same with the other two materials. Now I have my roof, redwood, and concrete materials all set up. And if you notice, that automatically updated our models as well. You'll also notice that this house is broken up into a lot of different pieces. Now, depending on where you got your asset from, it may not be like this. However, I know from experience that if I just grab all of these and pull them in, I'll be able to see the complete house. Now again, you don't have to choose one of these asset packs from this vendor. You can choose any one. However, I recommend that you at least find one that you're able to move inside of that has an interior. This is going to be a critical part of building out our project. And one thing we'll also notice, if we press play and take control of the default pawn, we can try to go inside of our house and we notice that we're blocked. This is because when we imported these models, it didn't create a collision channel. If we go to show and then show collision, we can see that there are lines preventing us from entering this house. But we do want collision because we want to be able to move inside the house and have the walls actually interact with the player. We can fix this by going into the different static meshes and changing the collision so it allowed us to navigate inside of the house without walking through the walls. And we can see here, I have one of these selected. There's clearly a collision on this asset that's preventing me from entering the house. With that selected in the details panel, we can see down here that it shows us which mesh it is. And we can click this little folder with a magnifying glass and it will navigate to that asset in the content browser. Let's fix the collision on one of these assets. If we double click it, it's gonna open the model. And when we open this up, we can see the collision again here in this window. If we go to show and then show complex collision, we can see these lighter blue lines show us the complex collision channel for this actor. This is the collision that's built by Unreal Engine based upon the geometry of this asset. And I want to warn you that using complex collision can sometimes cause a lot of performance issues if it's on a lot of models in your game. For our project though, this should be fine, but just keep it in mind if you have a much larger project. So I'm gonna to go to collision and say, remove collision. And then I wanna use convert boxes to convex. And this is where it gets tedious. We're gonna to need to do this for all of the actors in our scene. All right, so I got all the collisions set up on my project. Now I'm able to go inside of the house and navigate within there. So that may be a little bit tedious for you. If you don't wanna do this, you can always try to find a different asset pack, but I don't mind taking the extra steps, especially since this vendor was kind enough to give us access to a lot of his assets for free. In the next lesson, we're gonna start building out this level more by creating a landscape. And the landscaping tools are a very powerful feature in Unreal Engine that allows us to make very realistic levels and more immersive for your player. So I'll see you back in the next lesson.